Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is group number seven, created by Victor Guerrera, Alejandro Ferrero, and myself, Charles Aguirre. Today, we're going to be discussing disc brake designing cars. So this is the agenda for today. We're going to go into an introduction, from a statement, and all following topics you guys can see. So a little introduction. This brake is, multiple, uh, is a complicated task and one of the most important tasks while designing a car. The main components of the disc brake is the caliper, the rotor, the bats, and the master cylinder. This is a, uh, a diagram representation of how it works. So basically the hydraulic fluid is pumped to the master cylinders where, um, where it's going to be pushed against the disc. The bats are going to be pushed against the disc to create a frictional force in order to decelerate the car from one speed to another or bring it to a complete stop. So some of the problems that we encounter in these brakes is the corrosion. Weather conditions take a big role in the corrosion of these brakes, uh, the snow and rain. <clears throat> also, geographical location like coast areas. Uh, we know that coast areas is abundant in salt, which is a common uh, factor of corrosion in this. You made it in long, on, in long winters. Uh, also, the braking force, there is an even thickness on the front disc brakes because there is more braking force applied in the, to the front differential than the rear one. Also, sudden and cooling heating condition will create the formation of the disc brake. So some motivation that we have, uh, the disc brakes are responsible to bring all the passengers inside a car to, for, and to, to safety. And we're gonna try to uh, design reliable, reliable uh, this being an extreme conditions also. So uh, we're gonna maintain our current design. We're gonna try to create it with better dissipation in heat and distribute the braking force along the, the disc. So some history, this brake began during 1890s in England. Frederick uh, Lanchester in 1902 was the first one who designed the caliper. It was a copper median and it was short durability because the copper wear off real quick. So Crowder's Crown began his study of this in 1949. They, they redesigned the disc brake of some complications that they encountered, but the first, uh, the first disc brake was implemented in UK in the Jaguar Type C in 1954. Now I'm gonna pass it to Victor. Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about current design. Uh, the basic components of the system are the wheel hub, which is where the rim and the wheel goes, the brake dash of disc or rotor, which has uh, ventilated slots to better help dissipate the heat, the caliper, which in the houses the brake pad, the brake pads, and the master cylinder, which is where the hydraulic fluid and the pistons are located. Some alternative designs in terms of the disc is uh, slotted discs, which is where um, grooves are machined into the faces to help evacuate gases, debris, and water. It has a higher structural integrity than cross drilled rotors due to the fact that they're not completely drilled through. And, but the disadvantages is that there's, there's stress concentration on the sharp edges and uh, possible debris can be lodged between the grooves and the pads. The alter another alternative design is the cross drill the rotor, which is found in most high performance vehicles. The advantage of this is better heat dissipation due to the fact that it's uh, completely drilled through, so better ventilation. Uh, in imp improved the uh, initial brake bite of the pad into the rotor. The disadvantage is a weaker structural integrity due to the fact that the material's drilled completely through, so there's a higher crack probability and a higher manufacturing cost. Uh, another alternative is in the material of the disc, which most discs are made out of uh, cast iron, a single piece of cast iron for non-performance for, for non production vehicles, and a two-piece construction containing cast iron and aluminum for um, higher performance vehicles. Steel is also used, uh, it's created from a single thin piece, and it has reduced waste and a higher heat capacity, although it's not very durable. Another material used is a high combination, uh, high, uh, combination of carbon and uh, cast iron, which has a reduced brake noise and vibration and a higher thermal dissipation rate. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Alejandro. Hi, how's everyone doing today? I will be going over the future developments involved in our project, which is the design of brake system design. 
First of all, we wanted to talk about the future advances in material science, which will greatly impact the design of brake systems. Whether the brake system is, will be involved in the application of a race car or an everyday driver, the materials will greatly impact the choices that we make. Now, for the future designs, we'll include automatic braking assistance, which would reduce the braking time and distance. Also, we want to focus on the reducing the overall size and weight of the system in order to, to optimize it. Now, for our proposed design, we chose the carbon ceramic material due to its very lightweight. Also, the ceramic material has high capacity of heat dissipation rate, and it has an 85% higher heat capacity than iron and more, double, than, more than double of its radiance. Now, the lower heat accumulation due to the lower density of the material was also a good choice, and the double group designed to maximize the heat dissipation, as you can see on our SOLIDWORKS model. Now, as for conclusion, the basic bit by design holds true for all the cars with modifications depending on the application. Most improvements come from the modification of the big disc or rotor, mostly on the size and material of them. And for the future material improvements, as, as we said earlier, the, the better the material, we will be able to design a better disc brake depending on the car and maximize its performance. We want to thank everybody and that concludes our project.